Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Wednesday, and it's July 15th. We have finally reached the middle of the month, and uh, actually we'll reach it at noon, as I talked about yesterday. So uh, July is absolutely moving quickly uh, in this crazy year that we are in. Um, so today we are going to wrap up 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, we've got more to go, but we're going to wrap up chapter 2 of 2 Peter today. Uh, we're going to tackle verses 17 to 22. And I probably won't spend as much time on this as I have in the last few days, because uh, part of this is really kind of a continuation of, uh, of, of the author's bombastic attack on, and on these uh, false prophets and, and teachers. But at the end, he starts talking about uh, the conditions that they find themselves in. So we'll, we'll probably spend more time, well, I'm going to spend more time on that talking about that today. So uh, let's say a quick prayer this morning, and boy, we better be praying that it actually rains today. Uh, I think yesterday was supposed to be, a, was, we we're supposed to get a rain most of the day yesterday. I think I counted six drops. So um, then that was in the afternoon uh, when I was working out in the garage. I could, uh, I pulled my car out and I could see a few drops on the, on the hood, but uh, mm, there weren't many. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but right now it sure feels like rain and let's just hope it does. So let's say a quick prayer and then we're going to dive in and finish up the second chapter of second Peter. Okay. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do lift up a prayer for, or as we've mentioned, for, uh, the life giving rain that we just so desperately need. We look at the, uh, the fields and the, and the yards and we, we see that the, the need for, uh, some moisture. It's been quite a while since we've had an appreciable amount of rain and, uh, we here in Lake City area definitely need it. I know that other areas around us have gotten some rain out of this last few days, but Lord, here we, we are sorely in need, and we pray for your relief. Uh, Lord, we pray for comfort. We pray for strength. We pray, pray for courage as we continue to deal with the unfolding events of this year. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for your, the strength you give us in order to get through these times like this, where we um, encounter one difficulty after another. And um, oftentimes life, that is the way life is, Lord, and we thank you for the, 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 the life-giving force of Jesus Christ that we can hold on to him and to, uh, to feel him walking with us when we are struggling. And we pray this today uh, on behalf of ourselves as well as all of those listening and all those that are out there that haven't heard your word, Lord. Please give us the strength and the guidance to know how and when and uh, the best method to uh, uh, to present your gospel to those folks so that they too might come to love you and have a relationship with you. Pray this in your love and glory. Amen. Okay, so let's take take a final run at chapter 2 in Second Peter. Um, we talked about taking runs at things yesterday, and we've got one more. We got through that drift, and now we got to go through one more. So I'll get the extra points again. So here we go. Uh, 17 to 22. These are waterless springs and mist driven by a storm. For them, the, for them, the deepest darkness has been reserved. For they speak bombastic nonsense, and with licentious desires of the flesh they entice people who have just escaped from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption, for people are slaves to whatever masters them. For if they have... For, for if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overpowered. The last state has become worse for them than the first, for it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than, after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment that was passed on to them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog returns back to its own vomit, and the sow is washed only to wallow in the mud. Okay, and again, Peter, please tell us what you really think. Um, he, he doesn't seem to be sparing any any assault on on these uh, false prophets and these that have fallen away, and these that seem now some of them to be trying to pull it away. It's a little reminiscent in a much strong, more strongly worded way than than what we had in the Johannian epistles. And I think I may have mentioned that yesterday. Um, here he, he he talks about we very much have these folks that have pulled away and have have, have lost you know they, they've they've been came from a uh, uh, pagan existence um, they they are they are Gentiles and they've come to 
this Christian understanding, and now some of them apparently have fallen away, but worse so, some of them seem to pro possibly have have distorted some of Christianity and maybe commingled Christianity with some of their prior beliefs. And what we may be seeing here is we may be seeing some some Gnostic influence. Um, many times, you know, people talk about, well, the Gnosticism didn't really come around much till the second century, but then I've seen others that talk that say that Gnosticism actually existed within Judaism prior to Jesus even. Um, Gnosticism kind of evolved out of a, an emerging of Greek thought with, with Jewish thought. Um, so it's, you know, we, we have this danger of blending things in and, and defiling. And, you know, he talks about that. Um, and so we have that going on. On top of, and as I believe I mentioned yesterday, that, that what happened so much during during this time with Nero um, and the persecution of the Christians that the Christians were were, were captured or, or arrested and tortured uh, to out and give give out names and you know of their fellow Christians and and some of them under under duress of torture gave out names of others and others were captured tortured and killed and some of those people that were tortured originally then were renounced Christ um, and returned at least temporarily to their pagan ways in order to save themselves. And I think that's part of what he's getting after here. Um, and I think I mentioned that yesterday. Um, and he's really coming down hard on them. Um, and I think I know I mentioned yesterday about the Gospel of Mark is kind of trying to patch that back up, I believe. Um, so, but the the thing here is is that there seems to be, as I mentioned earlier, some of these people have either are, are either trying to bring people back to pull people that have come to Christ back out of the Christian um, sect. You know, it's, it's probably at this time still really a Jewish sect. Um, it's you know this is in the '60s. They really haven't completely broken away yet. They're beginning to, though, because this would have been after James was martyred. So really, they probably have. I should back up on that. Um, but here, um, these people seem to be draw either drawing them away to return to a truly pagan worship, uh, the Gentile way of life, the Roman Roman you know, worship of the, worshiping of the, of the deification of the emperor. Um, or they've come up with some kind of a twisted, con convoluted, combination religion so to say as I spoke of um, and that can be even more dangerous than than going probably going back to your pagan ways because you really defiled the the, 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 the life of Christ um, I remember and I don't know if I've mentioned this or not um, we used to be in a um, our gallery used to be in, in, in Omaha was in a strip mall and at the end there was a little shop that was started off as a as a uh, martial arts studio and one of the one of the owners left and uh, the, that owner was really the martial art trainer and the person that was left was was a kind of a uh, an interesting soul um, and he was promoting uh, and he actually got himself accredited as a college somehow or another and started teaching classes and he was teaching religion classes down there and that were a blend of Christianity, uh, Native American uh, religion, and Asian, Eastern religions. And he con had conflated all of these things and picked what he really liked the best and stuck them together. And I always said, it, you know, he, he, his nickname was Pete. Um, I always said, that's religion by Pete. So I, I suspect that there's some of this religion by Pete going on here where they've come up with this conflated, contorted, defiled abomination uh, is what it would, would be a word that would come to my mind. Um, and it's false teaching and uh, these false prophets. And, and so uh, I think there's part of that going on there. So I think there's a number of different things going on here, um, at least the, the, my understanding of this history of the time and reading what's written here as well. Um, and so here in verse 21, um, well, verse 20 and 21, but we'll look at 21. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment that was passed on to them. 
and then he talks about that really grotesque verse about the dog and the and the uh, the, uh, the, the the vomit and uh, you know and then we those of us in the rural communities we can understand the idea of a hog or a pig going back you know you could clean a pig up you know you go to go to county fair you know you see the, see the hogs at county fair and they're nice and clean and pristine you know as soon as they get back to the place and they turn them loose in the pen they're going to be wallowing in the mud uh, so no sooner do you get them cleaned up and get them on the right path and they're back there getting dirty again um, and so that's the imagery that, that we've got going here. Um, and it really probably is worse for these fools because you've had the opportunity. You, you, it's not like you can feign ignorance, can you? Uh, you you've mm -hmm. been taught um, about Christ. You, you, you've been exposed to the truth, as we believe it as Christians. I mean, that may be offensive to somebody in this world of offensiveness. Uh, you know, well, I'm sorry. In order to profess the gospel, you are unendoubtedly going to offend somebody so this idea that we should never be offended is one of the most offensive things I know of you know um, we don't have a right not to be offended in this world um, but that's a that's a rant but so once you've been exposed to the truth as we believe it and as I believe it it really is it's not just my belief that's what I what I totally have faith and know um, that once you've had that exposure and once you've come to that experience and once you've walked that path, if you then turn and go away, and especially if you start even not just walk away and, 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 and expose yourself to condemnation, but worse yet, you start trying to drag others with you. Misery loves company and you're trying to drag others away. Oh boy, you're, um, you're going back to James where teachers are going to be treated more harshly and a false teacher is going to be treated the most harshly of all. Um, so it's a very, it's a dangerous place to put oneself. Um, and so it, it, this is the warning that, that, that is coming out of the second chapter of Second Peter is this condemnation of these false teachers, warning about those that have walked away, warning about those that have betrayed others, um, you know, and, and we don't want to be one of those folks. And um, But the good news is that um, the path back to reconciliation is still there. Uh, we don't want to abandon those people that have walked away. We want to continue to try to convince them to come back and to return, re-return to, to the fold, uh, so to say. And I think that's part of what's going on in Mark's gospel, really, is that some of these people have, been, have come back after having left, and Mark is trying to patch back up the... Uh, the, the break there and that's part of why in Mark's gospel especially the disciples seem to be so inept um, it's a message to those who have, too, have fallen short and fallen away and, and abandoned Christ as, as the disciples abandoned Jesus in the garden um, that that door is the door for reconciliation is, is still there so even though we, we have these very strongly worded words here in 2nd Peter against those that have left um, we want to be careful. We want to. We, we don't want to make that door completely closed. We want to keep trying to bring those folks back, because that's the grace we talk about. Grace. There's grace. We have to extend that grace. But of course, as we talked also, you have to come and ask for the grace. The grace is there waiting for you, as we talked about before. But you've got to come back and take it. Um, you've got to come back and 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 confess and and return and. And, and repent, you know, return, turn around, repentance. So with that, let's um, bear in mind that it would be, you know, we don't want to fall away. We don't want to uh, um, to uh, allow others to fall away. If we see one str someone struggling, we want to come alongside and say, hey, what's going on? And try to shore them up. And and uh, But be careful that they aren't going to try to drag you away also. So there's that double-edged sword. So lots, there's actually a lot in that. Um, and so, uh, but I am going to leave you at that because we've gone on about 15 minutes and that's about as long as I want these things to go. Um, trying to keep them in bite-sized pieces. I, I guess, because my wife will scold me if I go over 20 minutes. You know that, don't you? Okay. All right. With that, um, go out there, try to help those that are struggling um, and try to bring those that have never been, been to Christ at all. Try to bring them in because by golly, that's what we are truly called to do. Uh, we are true called to share the gospel, the good news.
All right. And I hope part of the good news today is we get some rain. All right. Have a blessed day and uh, be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you tomorrow.